In this lecture, we are going to learn how to chain multiple middlewares in ASP.NET Core. In the last lecture, we learned that when we use this run method in order to create a middleware, that middleware is a terminal middleware or short circuiting middleware because that middleware cannot call a next middleware in the request pipeline. So using this run method, we cannot chain multiple middlewares. We cannot execute multiple middlewares for a given request. So another way to define a middleware is by using the use method. Okay. So using this use method also, we can create a middleware. The only difference here is that when we use this use method there for this middleware, we are going to get two arguments. When we use run method for the middleware function, we only get one argument. That argument is of type HTTP context. But when we are using this use method, in case of use method, we are going to get two arguments. The first argument is going to be of type HTTP context. And the second argument is going to be of type request delegate. Okay. And here, let's call it next. And now we can go ahead and we can call this next function. Okay. And when we are calling this next function, we also need to pass this context object so that when this next function will call the next middleware function in that next middleware function for this context object, we are going to receive the updated context, right? So here we are updating this context object because if you see using this context object, we are writing something in the response body. So here we are updating this context object. So we need to pass that updated context object to the next middleware when we are calling this next function. Okay. So we also need to pass that context object to this next function. And also this next function is going to be executed asynchronously. So here let's also use the await keyword because here we want this next function to finish its job. Then only we want to move further in the code. And with this, now if I run the program, first of all, this middleware function should be called because we are writing this middleware function first. And from within this middleware function, we are calling this next function, this next method. So this next method should call the next middleware function in the request pipeline. So the next middleware function here is this middleware function. Keep in mind that the middleware functions gets executed in the order in which they have been defined in the code. Here, this middleware function has been defined first. So it will be executed first. And from within this middleware function, we are calling this next function. So this next function is going to call the next middleware function, which has been defined in the code. So here, the next middleware function, which has been defined here is this middleware function. So this will be called. Okay. Let's call this one middleware one and let's call this one middleware two. And now if I go ahead and if I run this program, you will see that the breakpoint has come here inside this first middleware function. Let's also put a breakpoint inside the second middleware function here. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's debug this. So when I press F10 here, we are in the first middleware function. So on the response object, we are writing this text content. We press F10 from here. We are calling the next middleware function. Okay. So if I press F10 now, it should go into the body of next middleware function as you can see. Okay. So now we are in the body of second middleware function. Then if I press F10 again, this will also get added to the response body. So basically this text message will be appended to the response body. And after that, if I press F10, so now this middleware function has finished its execution. So now the control will move to the first middleware function from where we called the second middleware function as you can see. And with that, if I press F10, you will notice that again, the control has reached here. That's because a second request has been made to the fav icon, to the fav icon of the web application. So for that second request also, these two middlewares will be executed. Okay. So let's ignore that. If I click on this continue button, so here you can see the response. So we have the response from both the middlewares. This response is from the first middleware and this response is from the second middleware. Okay. So you can see the second response has been appended with the first response. And let me open the developer console here. Let's go to network tab and let me make a request here. 
and let's continue okay so here you will see that we made a single request but you can see two requests log here the first request is the request which we made we made this request to localhost colon uh, 5045 so this port number so that is okay and after this request was finished browser automatically made a request to this favicon.ico so this is the default behavior of browser and that's why in our code this breakpoint is being hit two times all right so as you can see here we have chained two middleware functions so for each request these two middleware functions will be executed first this middleware function will be executed and since from within this middleware function we are calling this next function the second middleware function will also get executed let me stop the application here and if i go ahead and if i comment this line that means if i don't call this next function and that is also possible even though we are receiving this next function as an argument for this middleware function it's not necessary that we need to call it if we want we can also avoid calling it so in that case what will happen is the next middleware in the request pipeline will not get called that means now if i run this program this middleware will be called and from within this middleware this text message will be added to the response but after that since we have commented this line the second middleware function will not get called so here this middleware function will act like a terminal middleware or short circuiting middleware because here we are not calling the next function so it is not going to call the next middleware in the request pipeline let's actually see that so now if i run the program you will see that the breakpoint has hit here if i press f10 we are in the middleware function so this text will be added to the response body let's press f10 again and you see the control did not go to the second middleware function so again the control has come to the first middleware function that's because this time the request has been made to fav icon so let's ignore this let's click on this continue button and in the browser you will see only one response that means the second middleware has not been executed so always remember that in order to call the next middleware in the request pipeline we always need to call the next function from the first middleware and here we are adding only two middlewares but if we want we can add more middlewares so let me go ahead and let me copy this line let's paste it here and let's call it middleware 2 and let's call this one middleware 3 okay so here let's simply add a line break okay so what this middleware will do is it will simply add a line break between this response and this response so now if i run the program first this middleware will be executed then from within that middleware we are calling this next method this next function so this next function will call the next middleware in the stack the next middleware in the stack here in the request pipeline is this middleware so this middleware will be called and then from this middleware also we are calling the next function so it will call the next middleware in the request pipeline so this is the next middleware in the request pipeline so this middleware will be called and from here we are not calling any next function or we don't have any other middleware in the request pipeline so in that case what will happen is this middleware will be executed and then the control will reach back to that middleware from where this middleware was called that means to this middleware function and this middleware function has also completed its execution so now the control will reach to that middleware function from where we called this middleware that means to this first middleware so now if i run this program let's see what happens so first the control has reached to the first middleware function let's go ahead and let's press f10 f10 and from here we are calling the next middleware function so now the control should reach to this second middleware function if i press f10 you will see that the control has reached to the second middleware function again let me press f10 f10 so again we are calling this next method so this next method is going to call the next middleware in the request pipeline so now you will notice that the request has reached to the third middleware function so let's go inside that middleware function so this text will be added to the response body let's press f10 so the execution of the third middleware has completed and we are calling this third middleware function from within the second middleware 
by calling this next method right so now the control will reach the second middleware as you can see and there we don't have any code after this call to next method so the execution of the second middleware is also complete so now the control will reach the first middleware from where we are calling this second middleware so if i press f10 now we are in the first middleware function and the execution of this first middleware function is also complete so we can click on this continue and again the control has come to the first middleware that's because again a second request has been made by the browser to the fav icon so let's simply ignore that let's click on this continue button and here you can see we have the response first we have the response from first middleware then from the second middleware we are adding two line breaks and then we have the response from the third middleware all right now the next question is after we have called the next method from the middleware function can we write code after that for example can we have any code after call to this next function can we write some code here yes that is also possible so when the control will reach back to this middleware function after call to this next function after that whatever code you have after this next function that will be executed all right now you might ask what is the difference between this use function this use method and this run method well we have already discussed the difference between this use method and run method so basically the callback function the middleware function which we pass to this run method it only takes one argument the argument of type http context but the middleware function which we pass to this use method it takes two arguments the first argument is of type http context and the second argument is of type request delegate so if you go to the definition of this run method by right clicking and going to the definition you will notice that this run method is actually an extension method now how do we know it is an extension method because if you see the class inside which it is present it is a static class then this run method is also a static method inside that static method the first argument of this run method is used using this this keyword okay so that's why we can say that this run method is an extension method so we can access this run method on any object on any instance of type i application builder so if you notice here this app is of type web application and the web application inherits from i application builder so that's why we are able to call this run method on this app on this instance of type web application that's because this web application inherits from i application builder okay so we can call this run method on an instance of type i application builder and there we need to pass only one argument of type request delegate a request delegate is basically a function an anonymous function or a lambda expression which can handle the request all right now if i go to the definition of this use method this use method this is also an extension method because if you see it is present inside a static class the method is also static and there also the first argument of this use method is of type this that means we can call this use method on instance of type i application builder just like run method but the second argument of this use method it is of type func and if you see this func basically this is also a delegate so this delegate it takes first argument of type http context and the second argument of type func so if i scroll left here you see we are calling the second argument as middleware and it is a function that handles the request and calls the given next function okay so this is the only difference between run and use both of them can be called on an instance of type i application builder but run takes a callback function a request delegate which can take only one argument but use take a callback function a request delegate which can take two arguments the first argument is of type context and the second argument is of type run delegate all right and because of this if you want you can also avoid specifying the data type like this and this should not create any issue and this is possible because in the predefined library itself the data types are already specified but keep in mind that when you're not specifying the data types in that case you should always call the 
next function, the next method. Otherwise, what will happen is if I go ahead and if I comment this, you will see that we have a compile time error here. Okay. So when you're not specifying the data type, in that case, you need to call the next function. Otherwise, you will get a compile time error. So this is all from this lecture. In this lecture, we learned how we can chain multiple middleware functions. To chain multiple middleware functions, we use use method on this app. And in order to define a terminal middleware or short circuiting middleware, we can use this run method. This is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.